Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw a fish, a particular type of fish. This is going to be one of those Japanese koi, you know, those beautiful um, orange, yellow, red fish that you see uh, swimming in pools and ponds sometimes. And uh, I'm just going to begin with a very basic contour shape and then I'll come back to move on to the next step. All right, so uh, hopefully this basic contour is not too hard to draw. Uh, one interesting thing that I'm going to be doing here is having the um, the tail sort of flip around uh, so that you're seeing the other side of the fish. Now, I got this idea by looking not at photographs, but at sort of uh, old woodblock prints and illustrations. And in fact, my whole approach with this is going to be a little different from some of the more realistic looking animal videos that I've done. This is going to be a little more um, design oriented. It might almost look a little bit like a tattoo or something by the time I'm done with it, but I wanted to try something different. So anyway, um, do your best uh, to copy this. And, and you can see that I've got a sort of a gray colored paper here. This is going to help me later on when I add white highlights uh, with uh, colored pencil and possibly gouache uh, later on. Um, uh, but for now, let's go ahead and get some uh, more of the details uh, of the fish in place. Okay, so we've started adding some of the details here, and um, let's begin by talking about the fins. Uh, as I studied uh, photographs of the koi carp, uh, I was a little surprised to realize that uh, it seems to me there are as many as six fins uh, uh, of coming off the lower side of the fish. And those of you who know more about carp than I do, you can correct me about this, but it seemed pretty clear to me that there was one, two, three, four, like you can't see this fourth one over there, and then there was a sort of an, an extra uh, fin, uh, possibly just one, but maybe two back here, uh, in addition to this dorsal. Uh, fin going across the top, and notice how I, you know, I erased that initial line because we're we're looking a little bit down, sort of on uh, on the spine, I guess you would say, of the uh, of this fish, and it it is even sort of flopping around so that as the tail uh, turns across itself, you're seeing the other side of that fin just a little bit over there. Now, uh, here we want to just sort of um, cap this off, the actual body of the fish, and uh, it's a, it's just a lightly rounded area uh, on most of the reference that I looked at. And one thing that I'm going to do here is to have this uh, tail fin extend a little bit and again sort of flop around. It's a sort of a decorative thing, I think. It's almost like a, a flag or something, you know, how it's... Uh, Flapping in the breeze. <laughs> what is what is this? A flying fish is flapping in the breeze. Quilly, snap out of it. Anyway, um, so we're getting <laughs> these two different uh, aspects going on here with the uh, tail fin that I think we, in the end will make it. Like I said, this is more of a, de a decorative sort of tattooish approach that I'm going to be using here. Um, didn't really talk about the gills here, this line. Um, you're going to want to pay attention to the distance here so that you have enough space for the facial features and uh, the size of the eye socket relative to the rest of uh, the head. Um, there's actually a sort of a secondary, I don't think it's gill, but maybe just sort of uh, structural element right here behind the eye, or maybe it is a gill. I'm just showing off my ignorance all over the place with this video, folks. But I think what I'm going to do right now is zoom in a little bit so that I can show you the details uh, of the mouth. All right, so when I did those uh, first basic guidelines, I did this classic sort of simplistic um, fish uh, shape. And uh, in truth, we almost need to just erase a little bit here to make way for the real mouth the way it really looks. And um, there's a couple of things to pay attention to. Uh, and again, I think there are different breeds or different species maybe or style of uh, uh, carp. And so you, uh, n this may not apply to everyone that you see. But uh, it seemed to me that there was a little bit of a, a, uh, a bump here uh, at what I guess you would think of as the forehead. Uh, and then a second bump coming down to what I'm going to call the upper lip. <laughs> even though I don't know if it qualifies as a lip. I don't know anything, people, but I'm just drawing a bunch of lines. Anyway, so these, uh, there's a sort of an upper lip here, and then a lower lip that uh, goes, is tucked in underneath it. Now, when you look at some photos of um, koi fish, especially at feeding time, 
these mouths will open wide into like a real kind of circle. It almost just looks like a suction cup. It's kind of hard to believe. Um, but I saw a lot of those and, and, and it looked weird to me uh, to draw it that way, actually, um, even exactly as it looked in the photos. So I've tried to m make a slightly closed mouth here. It just seemed a little more natural to me. Um, and then uh, there's a couple of what almost look like whiskers here. Though of course they aren't. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're not. Whiskers? Fish with whiskers? What's going on here? Um, but I'm going to get uh, one coming off here and then a second one that is a little bit uh, obscured just be because of the position of the head. Tucked back there. And uh, as for the eye, um, I did, this was really the eye socket, and back here I'm going to actually move in towards drawing the actual eye. And uh, the pupil, if indeed it is a, uh, called a pupil, is really quite large and sort of dilated looking, um, again, in most of the photographs that I looked at. And that kind of takes us to where we need to be. Now we're getting to uh, the trickiest part, uh, and that is to get in the, um, the scales. And this is going to take us back a little bit to this mermaid video that I did uh, a while back in which I devised a way of getting the scales in place. Well, I'm going to kind of do that same thing, but I'm going to do it in time-lapse. Uh, uh, get some of these diagonal lines uh, across the body of the fish so as to help me place the scales later on. Okay, so you can see how I've put in a bunch of um, diagonal lines, some of them with a little bit of curve to them to sort of help um, give form to the fish's body. And uh, what I'm going to do now is do sort of the uh, cross lines that, you know, cut across here, and those together will show me where to put uh, the individual scales on the body of the fish. Again, I'll do this in time lapse, but then we'll be back and I'll do at least some of the scales uh, real time. Okay, so we've got all of these uh, diagonal lines, uh, crisscrossing lines in place, and it's time to start actually drawing the um, scales. And so I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so that you can see uh, how I draw them one at a time. Okay, so I've switched uh, to my black Prismacolor colored pencil, um, really just to save myself the trouble of drawing these all over again uh, when it's time to complete the illustration. But watch how I uh, begin with a... Um, you know, sort of gently curved line, just as you would expect uh, scales to be. And then you just keep adding them in. Now I'm going to try to keep this light, actually, uh, now that I'm doing this, um, because I don't want this uh, illustration to call too much attention to the individual scales, but I do, I want them to be there. I want you to get a sense of the, the texture, but I think really what I want to be the star of the show, really, here, uh, will be the colors later on. Um, of course, the koi. Uh, koi. I sound like I've <laughs> I sound like I've never spoken Japanese in my life. Well, the koi. Yeah, we were big fans of the koi. Anyway, uh, no offense to <laughs> anyone who speaks like that. I'm pretty sure no one does speak like that except for me when I'm being a big goofball. Uh, anyway, so um, you can see how this, you know, by putting in those little diamond-shaped uh, squares, it just sort of helps me, without thinking about it too much, uh, to get all of these uh, scales evenly. Scales? Yes, scales evenly placed. Oh, and I was going to say, you know how when I draw... Um, when I draw manga-style illustrations, I always say, don't forget the blushies. I think with fish, it's don't forget the nostrils. There are actually nostrils. I think they're called nostrils. Are they? Someone let me know. <laughs> Curly, would it kill you to, like, go to Wikipedia, man? Find out the names for some of these things? Anyway, so, um, yes, there are uh, nostril-like orifices, let, let us say, uh, just in front of the eyes there, and... Uh, Above the mouth. What do you know? Right where you would expect them to be. Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull back a little bit and in time lapse, not only do all these uh, scales, but uh, really do black line art all the way uh, across the entire illustration.
Alright, well we've got most of the basic guidelines in place. I just wanted to say a few words about how um, this uh, dorsal fin here, I, I sort of broke up uh, the contour so that it wasn't such a simple line, gave it a little bit of a waviness to it. Um, certainly saw that in both illustrations and photographs of, uh, of the koi. And uh, basically we are ready to move on to what I've been looking forward to this whole video, and that is adding the color. Now, uh, people who've seen my videos have seen me use uh, quite a lot of mixed media and so forth uh, when I do full color uh, illustrations. And I thought with this one, just to sort of shake things up a little bit, I'm going to try to do almost all of the coloring with uh, colored pencils only. Um, Although I may allow myself the cheat of just a touch of white gouache at the end. But uh, I know a lot of people are not comfortable with watercolors, and a lot of people don't even have watercolors. But uh, they do, uh, hopefully, have colored pencils in the house. And so uh, that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to begin with um, a basic, let me see if I can grab it here, orange uh, Prismacolor pencil. It doesn't have to be Prismacolor. And you go to any art supply store, ask them um, for their uh, good, uh, you know, artist's colored pencils. I'm sure they will do the job. But um, what I'll do is, well, let's, I'll do a little bit of this real time. Let me zoom in a little. Uh, I'll give you the basic idea of how it works real time, and then we'll kick it into time lapse later on. Now, one of the interesting things about uh, the koi is the, the patterned, um, you know, the colors of their... Uh, scales and it, you know no two are going to be exactly alike and so as an artist you kind of have a free hand to play around and create any sort of pattern that you like and so uh, I'm beginning uh, with uh, the orange uh, you know sort of stripe vaguely stripe like patterns I never saw any where it was a really clean uh, clear stripe like a zebra stripe or anything um, uh, in fact, uh, there's just so many different varieties, it's hard to say anything in general about them. Um, I mean, I saw some that were like mostly orange with black spots, and then of course you see ones that are mostly white, um, and, uh, you know, any, basically any combination of colors that you can imagine. Um, but I thought anyway I'd show you some. One of the nice things about colored pencils is that they are, uh, fairly opaque, um, unlike uh, watercolors uh, or even some types of marker, uh, if you were working on a grayish colored piece of paper like what I have here, um, it might be hard to maintain the vibrancy of the colors against that gray. Uh, whereas with a colored pencil um, or some sort of thick um, gouache-like paint, um, it, you're going to maintain the, the color, you know, you can't see through it, so it's it, it, it'll uh, still be nice and bright, hopefully, uh, even on top of this gray kind of uh, washed out paper. So anyway, I think you get the basic ideas here. Um, one of the fish that I studied uh, and the kind of thing that I'm going to go for here is to make the whole head area basically uh, orange. So um, that you're going to see me doing that and maybe mixing in a little bit of reddish or brownish colored pencils to give it a little bit of form. Like I said, my goal with this one is to be a little more graphic in the sense of not trying to do a 3D photo reel looking uh, fish, uh, but more to do something that looks a little bit like a tattoo or a pattern or something like that that like you might um, use for other purposes. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, again pull back, kick it into time lapse, do pretty much all of the coloring. I suppose I can say quickly that you're going to see me using this orange, you're going to see me using white, and you're also going to see me using black as the three um, predominant colors uh, in this illustration. Uh, although as I said, maybe uh, mixing in a couple of other things. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do this all in time lapse and then come back to say a few words about how I colored it in.
right, well, you can see that the white colored pencil really becomes the star of the show. Uh, to get the effect, of course, you need to begin with a kind of a gray or off-white piece of paper uh, at the outset. And, um, hey, you know, I do think that this would make a, a halfway decent tattoo. So if any of you are so inclined, just go for it. You don't have to ask my permission. Um, but you do have to show me a photo, because i, I got to see how it turned out. Anyway, let me go ahead and thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books. we got Brody's Ghost and Mickey Falls. We're about one month from Brody's Ghost to Book 5, being out in the stores. Uh, and, of course, Mastering Manga 1 and 2, uh, both out there already. And uh, I do greatly appreciate those of you who buy those books as a way of helping me out. But let's go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. And I'll be back with another one. Real soon.